So this is your uh, Palisade Wasp IPA. Yes. 6.8% ABV, 82 IBUs. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about the hops that you put in? This is very good. Thanks. Um, yeah, we start with um, some FF7Cs, Falcon's Flight, um, in the first warp. Um, it's four or five different additions um, over the the, the boil. Um, starts with some Magnum for bittering, along with the Falcon's Flight. Okay. Uh, then we uh, add two and additions. That's, that's first warp hopping, right? The the Falcon's Flight is first warp. So so first warp hopping is when you, you put the hops in the brew kettle before you even, I mean, you, when you're uh, sparging off your Correct. Mash. Yeah, right. so I normally, okay. once, uh, once I got about half the, the kettle full and my burner's going, uh, I add that first word addition. Um, it lends to, you know, the overall IBUs without being quite as harsh um, as a normal bittering addition would be. It so kind of smooths it like out. like a smoother bitterness. Exactly. Okay. Um, so then we use uh, some Magnum um, up front for the bittering. Uh, and then as the, the boil goes on at um, 30, 15, and flame out, we use increasing additions of Palisade and Columbus. Um, and Palisade is traditionally more of a, um, I mean, it's dual purpose, but it's more of an aroma hop. Um, but we bump it up and use enough of it to achieve our, our bitterness level. Um, and it gives it a little, you know, a bit of a different uh, smooth kind of earthy flavor. Right. Um, and then once uh, the boil's done, uh, we dry hop, you know, once it's done fermenting with uh, Falcon's Flight and also um, more, more Palisade. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... Um you mentioned earlier that this was not your 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 recipe. Correct. Um, so what what would be the inspiration, uh, if you know, uh, to use Palisade in an IPA? Um, I am not entirely sure about what the inspiration was behind it. Do you do you remember? Um, I don't. I don't know. It, it, <laughs> That's all right. It doesn't and, matter. And, and, and honestly, it may have come down to availability. Uh, right. Um, yeah. It, it, it may have been a one-off that that stuck. Um, I, I don't recall what actually started, but it was just one that we did, and, and uh, it, it definitely stuck. Uh, one of the ideas was to rotate out IPAs as we were, you know, an early company, and to do one kind of you know, quarterly, change it out. Right. And this one just, we're not rotating it. We're keeping it. Yeah, I, well. I mean, I think that's a good decision. I'd drink this again, for sure. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times the, the hops we use are dictated by what we can get because we're so small. Um, we are going to start contracting next year, but we have it up until this point. So, so you've been doing spot buys. Exactly. So a lot of times. times um, sometimes you can't get. Right. Right. Uh, which is, you know, one offs not a big deal, but with the flagships, it can be particularly yeah. troublesome if, you know, if there hasn't even been word or you don't even see it coming that there's going to be a shortage and all of a sudden you can't get something. Yeah. That, that was the biggest eye opener for me. I think going from home brewing to commercial brewing was, wow, hop availability. It's, it's, it's crazy to try and track down hops, and it's crazy. Finding an ounce is one thing; finding ten pounds is another. Or trying to find forty-four pound boxes at a time, right? I mean, which is generally how we purchase. But uh, 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 it's ridiculously expensive, and it's ridiculously time-consuming to figure out because it's just not available from the distributors in the packaging that you want and, and the quantities that you want. So. Right. Now you may be able to get smaller quantities, but then the price goes up. Sure, it's yeah. substantially, and even then, uh, from the major suppliers. Uh, 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 I never thought that you'd call a supplier and say, I need Cascade, and they say, we don't have any. Never thought that would happen in my life. Right. <laughs> I think but, you know. it can be an advantage, though, sometimes. I think that it's, it's nice because it almost forces us to sometimes use or experiment with hops that we might not have normally used. We wanted right. to use this hop, um, but we couldn't get it, so now we're going to do this. And sometimes it's a, you know, a substitute that we can find. Other times we can't even find a substitute. So, well, let's see what we can do with it you know and um so it's led to some really cool experimental beers um we did uh the second stage ipa a while back which used the comet hop uh, which i had never even used home brewing and um it, again it was more of a more of a aroma uh, hop lower alpha acid right. and we just upped it to where it was enough to, to bitter it and it gave it a really cool unique um you know west coast style flavor Oh, nice. Um, I don't think I've smooth. ever had a beer with uh, Comet Hops in it. Yeah, and it was it was great. It was very popular, and hopefully we can bring it back. But now the problem is it, when you do something like that, and it does become popular, now can we get more Comet, you know? Right. So we'll have to see how that goes, but I hope we can bring that back. Well, good luck with your hop contracts. Thanks. Yeah, no, this is excellent. It's got a nice bite to it, but it, it's not like this, um, like, uh, 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 
you know how some IPAs will linger on your tongue for yeah, like a palate record almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, good it, job. It's, it's dangerous too. It's six point eight. It's it's pretty smooth. And I'll oh, have... in America, that's a session beer, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. But I'm going home. <laughs> I drink six point eight beers often. But I went home one night, and you know, you, next thing you know, you're through a growler of this, and you wake up the next morning like, what the hell happened last night? And it is a wasp. I mean, IPAs keep climbing up, man. I, I, I had an IPA yesterday that was 7.3 or something like that. I mean, yeah. they just keep going up. That's how the second stage was like 7.2. Yeah. They drank like a, a 5.8, which is awesome to me, but dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to drink those in a place you don't have to operate heavy machinery afterwards. Yeah. Exactly.